The miracle question created by Steve DeShazer is an innovative way to devise therapeutic goals and a core part of solution-focused therapy. When using the miracle question, you're basically asking people to imagine that their life has already dramatically changed for the better. So instead of focusing on how intractable their problem is and how difficult life is because of it, the miracle question focuses their attention on what will happen after the problem is dealt with, focusing on the desired future rather than the undesired present. It jumps right over the mechanics of how exactly the problem will be solved and into the mechanics of how they will live when it is solved. It's a neat way to bypass rigid constraints, black and white thinking and otherwise unshakable beliefs that things can't possibly change. Here's our first example. If by some magic a miracle occurred tonight as you were sleeping and you woke up in the morning and you no longer had any urge to obsessively vacuum, what would your day be like? Well, the first thing is I would wake up and realise I didn't have a huge, horrible knot of fear in my stomach. OK, so here the client has put their answer in negative terms, but they have nonetheless given Mark valuable information about what they have been experiencing and what they want to change. This gives him another marker against which to measure future progress, them waking up feeling more positive and calm. But sometimes you need to carefully tailor the miracle question to fit the circumstances of the client. For example, if people are grieving the passing of a loved one or are living with cancer, asking them about a miracle might elicit responses like, well, my husband would still be alive then, wouldn't he? Or this cancer would never have happened. The miracle question might not be such a great tactic in such circumstances. Instead, you could ask simply, what will be a sign that you're feeling better in the days to come? However, if someone's depressed and miserable because of the way they're living, then you can throw caution to the winds. OK, so if by some magic a wonderful miracle occurred tonight as you were sleeping, what would be different tomorrow in your life? I'd be happier. Uh, I'd spend more time with my friends. I'd be more active. Uh, I'd have a better job. I would go back to doing sport, dancing, all the things I love. OK. Here, Mark got his client to think about what will be different after the miracle. The client has given a clue to real desired outcomes that can begin to form the basis of therapeutic goals but you can go much further with a miracle question by helping your clients respond more creatively to it. You want people to feel the answer to the miracle question, to experience it and not just to think about it. This helps make the imagined future more real to them and not just an intellectual construct. So rather than getting someone to answer straight away, get them to go inside for a few moments and really see and feel the miracle. Ask them to imagine the answer rather than tell you in words. In this way, the miracle question can serve almost as a mini-hypnotic induction in which the answer to the question is experienced rather than just rationalised. OK, so total fantasy here. And I don't want you to think too much about this, but just notice what comes to mind. OK, so if by some pure magic a miracle occurred tonight, and all your problems have been swept away and your life is in an altogether much happier place. Never mind how, just, just imagining were that to occur and miraculously all kinds of things were better in your life. If you close your, close your eyes now just for a few seconds and don't try too hard, just notice what comes to mind. Uh, to, when everything's in such a better place and the miracle has occurred, the magic's happened and you're living the life tomorrow that you really want to be living, what kinds of things come to mind? Um, that was really interesting. Um, everything was brighter. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was spending more time with my friends. Um, I was loved by someone special. I don't know who, but, <laughs> but someone. Um, yeah, I was more social. I was doing my sport. I was uh, drawing again, a uh, better job, more money, just everything happier, okay. calmer and brighter. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Notice that Mark asked his client not to think about an answer to the miracle question, but to feel an answer by going inwards and noticing what spontaneously comes to mind. This gives the client's unconscious mind a chance to present a sense of what needs to be changed. This also sidesteps the sense of, this is how my life should be, to what the client really needs and wants. The client has had a real glimpse of the destination. Using the miracle question is a wonderful way to bypass the usual worries about how things could change, which can be tackled later in the therapy, and switch to a motivational focus on what your client really wants changed. Sometimes people need a little coaxing to enter into the spirit of miracle questioning, and sometimes we all need encouragement to see miracles that have already occurred or are happening right now.